Oh, and the crowd continues to cheer. Steve. Yeah. Good morning, you ladies. Hello. Hello, gentlemen. Hello. How's it going? Gentleman. Good. Hi. Good. Bare naked ladies are men. Yes. Is that a development? Yeah, well, it's a clarification. <laughs> we figured, you know what, it's our joke, and for years we had people saying, oh, yeah, where's the naked ladies? And we also go, ha, ha, very funny. As if, like, we didn't know that there was a joke involved there. So, okay, finally. So what we did was we, we did a two-part album. We did a, a 29-song album. The first half came out in the fall. It was called Bare Naked Ladies Are Me, mm -hmm. as in the Bare Naked Ladies Army. And the second half, Bare Naked Ladies Are Men, comes out next week. Yeah. The third installment, Bare Naked Ladies, Are Menopausal, was coming out right. the following yeah. year. We're just going to keep adding. That, but, you know, to, to, to have the menopausal album certainly uh, determines how old you are. Yes. Are you willing to do that? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah. Everybody at the tour gets a free hot flash. <laughs> is, that, is that what happens? Um, uh, a free hot flash drive, <laughs> oh, actually. This is what I want to talk to you about. This is what's so interesting. Um, you obviously, you've been making music for a long time and recording and selling music for a long time. And when your yellow tape first came out, sort of bucked the industry's trend, uh, became very successful. You guys, along with Moxie Fruvis and, uh, and as well, Lowest of the Low, kind of part of that rise in music. And it's changed so much in the way people consume music. The internet made it better, then all of a sudden it made it worse. And then now you guys are coming out, a few other bands as well, with these flash drives. Yeah. And the records are... And there's a lot of reasons as to why I do this. Tell, I mean, tell me why you have the, your new record on a flash drive. Well, we've done them a few times. We started with, with the, the holiday album we did a few years ago. Mm -hmm. um, we'd sell them live and, and online and so on. It's a portable way to sell the music that's not necessarily tied to the CD. I mean, I think we're, we're seeing the decline and the death of the compact disc and no one's, none of us are really mourning it. It's not the greatest uh, form for, uh, or a medium for music, but um, the portability and the shareability of that is great. Sharing of music is a big part of what gets people into it and what gets builds fan bases and builds communities and all those kinds of things. So be, you can plug that into your computer and plug it into, if you have one at home and one at work and mm -hmm. you want to burn it to a CD to listen to in your car or put it on your iPod, it's your choice to do that. Or listen. give it to your friends or that's the other part mm -hmm. of sharing. That's is the it, difference with us moving forward is that, you know, so many people ask us, well, how do you protect the music that's on there? Well, you don't. You know, we want to we encourage people to buy music, mm -hmm. but once they've bought it, they can do whatever they want with it. I mean... You know, if I buy a record, I want to be able to make as many copies of it as I want, listen to it in my car, listen to it at my cottage. I don't want locks and restrictions. I want to enjoy the music I purchased. And when I buy a CD, I buy it and put it on my computer right away. Right. I, I rip it to my computer and then it goes on, you know, I'll burn parts onto other CDs, I'll put it on my iPod, those kinds of things. And then the CD just kind of sits there mm -hmm. with the USB stick, I put it on my computer and I can reuse that stick. And it's a, it's, so there's part of our of our eco-consciousness, too, is it's a lot less waste. It's yeah, a little piece certainly. of hard drive you can use again. A smaller footprint. Um, how do other bands in other parts of the industry react to this? I know that Terry McBride Network, very vocal in support of this, sharing music and getting it out there. And I know also, both vocally and behind the scenes, there are a lot of people in the music industry who have a problem with this moving forward, and certainly with what, the way you guys are saying, hey, yeah, you rebuy it as yours, do what you want. Have, you, have, have people called you saying, enough? Yeah, I, people certainly have asked me whether I thought that I was doing the right thing by campaigning for this. Because at the end of the day, I don't want music to be free. I don't think that's that's the case. But I think that that the the desire to sue people for sharing music and the desire to lock down music so that it only works on certain devices and to make it not interoperable uh, with between devices is ridiculous. And I think we have to bridge that gap while technology and law move catch up with the fans. Fans have already decided how they want their music delivered, and a lot of that means P2P sharing, and it's our job to follow them. And I think you know we will see very shortly P2P embraced as a legal uh, place for people, marketplace for people to, to trade music, where, where music actually gets compensated. Pe people's hard work gets, gets uh, uh, compensated equally and evenly. The technology uh, exists to, to track it now. It's just not being implemented. But I'm not going to drag my feet and pretend that we're, uh, you know, we're still in 1995 right now either. Involved in a lot of different things off the stage, certainly when it comes to, to charity events, causes, things that you're passionate about. And uh, I wondered, within the band and with the band dynamic, is that an easy thing to do? Everybody's like, hey, I want you to do this. If that were the case, you guys would play every night at yeah, some event. Yeah, we could probably do two charity events a night. And the thing is, we kind of want to. Like, there's nothing that we would say no to if we... Couldn't, if, we, if we could do everything at once. Yeah. There's tons of things that the whole band 
is passionate about and we all get behind. Uh, and then everybody has their individual things that they support. And there's lots of times when we're free and, and everybody jumps on, you know. So Tyler's been very uh, active with Serve. Mm -hmm. And uh, we help out whenever we can. Steve's on the board uh, with the World Wildlife Fund. And we help out there yeah. whenever we can. Everybody sort of hops on and helps out where they can. It's easiest when, every, when, when each guy's got something that's their focus or their charitable focus and you can kind of say well we do those five things the harder one is when then somebody else comes in and says please do our worthwhile gig and it's hard it's so hard to say no especially with, like you know it's nice to have that barrier of agents and managers but at the end of the day a lot of stuff comes to us and I want I want to have that personal contact with people and develop those relationships but then it means you have to say no to people who are doing amazing mm -hmm. work and you want to be able to support that too and that part's hard why and I'd say now that you guys are your own label bosses and all that, it's like you got to start playing gigs for money too, don't you? It's, yeah. you know, there, there, there well, I support the RCEF fairly vocally, which is the uh, Robertson Children Educational Fund. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so I get the band to do right. gigs so I can send my children to university right, yeah. eventually. <laughs> Ed Robertson, founder yeah. of said band. <laughs> um, we, uh, I realized it was about four years of us playing... Um, Vancouver without getting paid because <laughs> just from different charity gigs we were doing there we kept doing these big ones at you know GM place and the Orpheum and stuff and I thought wow this is like one of our biggest places to play in the whole world and we're, we're not getting paid which is it's good that we're using our powers for good but at the end of the day it's hard to pay for your your evil and your buses and, yeah, yeah all our evil to pay for your evil when you don't exactly. have it uh, the, and uh, again to, this is an environmental thing because it, it seems to be the issue with people um, were you did you warm up to it? Obviously, you've always cared about it, but to be very proactive about it. Well, we realized there were there were some things that we could do that ha that had very little impact on us, but made a made a big difference environmentally. Simple things like running biodiesel on our buses, um, backstage reducing the waste, recycling, and instead of using plastic cups, using a corn-based product. We're at a point now, I think, when when uh, when people started to try to grow, go green, there was a lot of really crappy products, and you were really compromising to, to use green products. But there are amazing products now. You never notice the difference. You're, you're using a corn-based, completely biodegradable cup, but it's just like the plastic cup you used to use. And it's, it's about making simple choices uh, that, that, that have an effect. And so we're just trying to encourage that. And, you know, I, at the end of the day, I would love it if there were more stringent regulations, not just on us as people, but as on businesses and whatever else in Canada to actually make a difference. But I think some of the things that really pissed me off was looking at these really lightweight, like the one-ton challenge that the government used to have for Canadians to try and meet our Kyoto obligations. It's so stupid to say, well, if you want to try this, then maybe you should try it. We're not going to get anywhere if we just keep treating it that lightly. So we figured if, we're, if, if you can feel that how urgent the issues are and you don't actually try and make a difference inside your own world. Uh, the way you use energy, the way you travel, the way you do your business, then I think you kind of don't have the right to talk about it. Well, you did go. you see that movie, An Inconvenient Truth? I did, yeah. Funny stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you, the wacky outtakes at the end of that one on the oh. DVD were absolutely bitching. Nice Damn that, that Al Gore and his crazy crusade. <laughs> Be well, man. Thank you very much. Thank Thanks, you, man. Steve. The Bare Naked Ladies, everybody.